All right, my peeps, we have got this video chat going so that basically I can be here to access for you guys to answer your questions. Uh, that's what being part of this membership platform is all about. You've got tons of content and you got access to me. So <clears throat> we've got some questions coming in. So first question that's coming in is about carbohydrate. <clears throat> so... The question is, what what do I what's my take on the carbohydrate in terms of form of energy? Well, that's a it's a question you just can't answer. So let's let's go into some details so you guys have a better understanding of <clears throat> what the carb what the carbohydrate is and how it plays out in terms of the macronutrient totem pole. So there's three macronutrients: protein, fat, carbohydrate. Now, when I talk about fat, I'm not talking about vegetable oil and you know fat that's in shitty foods i'm talking about avocados almonds almond butters olive oil things like that so and then there's the lonely carbohydrate <laughs> the reason i say lonely is because that is the only of the three macronutrient that has one dimension only carbohydrate is energy period there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Have you ever heard anyone say, don't forget to eat your essential carbohydrate? It doesn't exist. Carbohydrates don't possess high levels of minerals, nutrients, anything. They're fuel. Okay. <clears throat> now, if used properly, that fuel can be very profound because it's quick loading. However, most people end up getting caught into the spin cycle of having the carbohydrate act more like a crutch than a tool and I'll get into that in a minute <clears throat> so carbohydrate single dimension macronutrient energy only then we'll go to the essential fat the second one essential fat has huge healing properties hair fingernails skin so think what it's gonna do to your muscle tissue in time to rebuild um, it also is an extremely stable form of energy it creates very 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 stable blood sugar which then knocks out a whole laundry list of problems you know people get tired in the afternoon people get mood swings people get headaches <clears throat> a lot of this shit is from unstable blood sugar which the carbohydrate is the number one culprit <clears throat> essential fat is a blood sugar stabilizer carbohydrate is a destabilizer so that's the essential fat. Then there's protein. It's multi-dimension too. We need it for building muscle, as we know. But also proven by science now can be converted into glycogen. So extra put into the system can be burned as fuel also. So that being said, the three macronutrients, only one of them, the lonely carbohydrate, has only one dimension, fuel only. So I'm a big believer in using essential fats for fuel because it's very stable um, people think oh, I use carbohydrate for this use it for that and if you use it properly it's very profound when you don't use carbohydrate <clears throat> it has a really really strong effect so let me give an example well it can have a really strong effect or it can turn into something that you you know you basically become almost addicted to uh, becomes a crutch you hear people say, I just can't function without my carbohydrates. Well, two twin brothers playing basketball. Uh, they go for a, uh, a rebound. They both come down, twist their, they both twist their ankle the same, think it's broken, go to the ER, x-rays, no break. Doctor says, okay, you got a bad sprain. You each get a bottle of pain pills. You're gonna take one a day until the pain relieves itself to where you can walk on it and you're gonna be fine. Should be three, four, five days. <clears throat> so the smart brother does exactly that. Uses the, the pill, takes him out of pain. Three, four, five days goes by. He's walking, he's good. The dipshit brother continues to take the goddamn pill. Well, when the 30 days runs out, he basically doesn't have another pill and without that pill, he feels like shit. Now he needs the pill just to feel normal. That is when the pain pill is turned into a crutch, just like when the carbohydrate turned into a crutch. Now, carbohydrate uses a tool, 
is like the smart brother that took the pain pill for as many days as he need had a huge effect. He stopped taking them when he, when he didn't need to anymore and it's still used properly as a tool. If he twisted his ankle again a week later, he could take the pills again, it would help him. The dumb shit brother, he, he twists his ankle again, he's in double trouble because he needs the pill just to feel normal and he just twists his other ankle and that son of a bitch hurt like hell and the pain pill doesn't have anything to do really helping him with, feel, with, helping him with pain a little bit, but it's primarily just to make it feel normal. Well, how many times have you heard people say, I just can't function unless I have my carbohydrates? What does that sound like? That's someone who's hooked, who's used the carbohydrate improperly, that needs it just to feel normal. And that's really what we're trying to get away from here, folks. Um, if you use the carbohydrate, <clears throat> like I use the carbohydrate coming into my bodybuilding shows, I use it to load in the last couple of days. Huge effect, because I don't use carbohydrates. When I do use a carbohydrate, it's got a profound effect. It loads quickly, my body responds, because it's a very, very digestible, quick loading fuel. Now, it destabilizes your blood sugar very quickly, <clears throat> so you gotta know how to use it. You've gotta basically keep using it at a, at a rate that's not gonna give you a big dip in your blood sugar. And then the, you're basically gonna load those muscles, over the top load the muscles, and you are going to have really, really good performance. You're gonna have almost an extra oomph in your step. Now again, if you try to use this methodology week after week, day after day, it doesn't work the same anymore. It doesn't have that same profound effect. <clears throat> so anyway, carbohydrate in my opinion is used as a tool, not as a crutch, meaning you use it for an event, you use it for a circumstance, you use it when you want to actually have that oomph that if you're competing, you know, if you have some event that you need to be over the top, you know, more than yourself, it's that's the kind of the profound it can have. That's the kind of forward progression you can get out of a carbohydrate if you know how to use it properly. <clears throat> All right. Next question is about motivation. So how do I stay motivated? Well, so I gotta say there's a lot of these questions you guys are probably expecting me to answer a certain way, but I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be dead honest. I'm gonna tell you the truth. It's not always what you wanna hear, but it's the truth. So motivation, it really comes from having the body operate at a high level, meaning if you're taking care of your body, you're eating right, um, you're, you're, bought, you're gonna have tons of energy, you're gonna be sharp in the mind, you're gonna have, there's gonna be a, a piece of you that doesn't wanna sit around because you feel good, you got energy, you know, you're, 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 you're clear in the mind, everything is good because your nutrition is on point. Now that's the first step. When your nutrition's on point and you have a stabilized blood sugar, you're gonna have energy all the time. You're not gonna need energy drinks, you're not gonna need all this extra caffeine and coffee, and you're gonna wanna do stuff all the time because your body is basically you know, putting out a ton of, excuse me, your body's putting out a ton of energy and that is going to <laughs> sorry about that i thought a booger caught my nose <laughs> uh, your body's going to be corrupt making tons of energy and when you have tons of stable energy you are not worried about getting off the couch you're off the couch so motivation the the, the basis for motivation is is basically giving your body what it needs so you have all the energy you that you want or you need to get up and do shit, to be motivated. <clears throat> when your mind is clear, you don't wanna think of it almost like waking up and feeling great for the day or waking up feeling hungover. When you wake up and you're hungover, that's when you're just really off the mark with your nutrition. When you're on the money of your nutrition, you're just like, bam, I'm up for my alarm, I feel great. <laughs> this is what it's all about, damn it. So once you get there, 
Now you got a whole different platform for motivation. Now, in terms of reaching goals, in terms of, in terms of all sorts of stuff, you know, it's going to be so much easier. You've got energy. You've got focus. You've got goals. You go to the gym. You get results. Uh, it feels good to break that sweat. All of these positive things are going to be coming at you literally because you've given your body what it needs to create the platform of energy and focus that is going to basically give you the motivation. Motivation. Motivation a lot of times comes, people suffer from lack of motivation largely because, you know, they're the motor, so to speak, is not running at high speed, meaning their metabolism is slow. They don't have the energy. They don't have the focus. So, of course, you're not motivated. Shit. Now, if you take care of yourself, that motivation is going to crank up. Then it becomes a snowball running downhill. You get your diet dialed in. You got more energy. You start sleeping better. You're well rested. You're getting up for your alarm. You feel good. You're focused. That goal that you have always thought about, it's just you're, you've got the energy to go do it. So you go to the gym. Uh, all of a sudden, your workouts are going great. Um, you see the changes you're looking for. Now all of these pieces of the puzzle start to join together and you realize really, really quickly that <clears throat> all of these pieces of, of the puzzle have started to fit and you're actually seeing the results you're looking for. You're feeling great. You're looking great. You're motivated. It's a chain reaction. People are always looking for a drink or a pill or a video or something to get motivated when it's almost like you're trying to start a car or run a car at full speed that doesn't have good fuel in it. You know, you can you can put some starter fluid, you know, in the carburetor and maybe get it started and, and you know run it real quickly, but it's gonna run out of gas. Well, that's the same thing. The car's not motivated, doesn't have any fuel, doesn't want to do anything but sit on the side of the road or in the garage. So <clears throat> again, you gotta really think about what I'm talking about in terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, the roots of these questions, because people tend to look for the surface things, a video, a drink, a button to push, uh, a new workout, a new something, something that's exciting. Well, that's great. And all those things that are exciting and all those things that are, are going to give you results are going to work 10 times better when you've got the motor in you slash the motor in your car is spooled up, running strong, and you've got the energy to do what you want to do. So motivation, if you start off, like I said, with the platform of nutrition, get yourself feeling good, got energy, you're sleeping good, now you're feeling really good. Now all these little things you normally use like videos or, you know, a drink, a cup of coffee, a pre-workout. These things are going to be, boom, they're going to hit you like a ton of bricks. You're not going to even want to use these tools all the time because you got you feel so good most of the time anyway. Now, maybe you got it. Maybe you had an extra long day at work, so you want to take an energy drink. You know, maybe you didn't sleep good and had an extra long day at work, so you want to take a drink. These things are fine, but again, all of these things that people use for motivation can also very easily turn into a crutch rather than a tool just like the carbohydrate. <laughs> so motivation, <clears throat> think of it from the roots. Don't think of, of trying to, you know, don't try to think about fixing or creating motivation, you know, up in the flower of the plant. Think about going down to the roots and, and correcting the roots of the plant so you know, that flower of the plant is so big and so strong, that's the motivation. That makes sense? So you really got to think of it from a different perspective. Okay, next question. <clears throat> and I don't think I have a booger in my nose after all. I think it's a shadow. <laughs> all right. This question is, what do I think about? What is my mental position when it comes to lifting heavy weights? Well, I think that's a great, great question. Very, very deep 
again, because I'm going to answer this thing from a perspective that is going to talk about the root, not the flower, so to speak. So people, again, are looking for, you know, there's, they're looking for, do you think about, you know, kicking somebody's ass? Do you think about doing this? Do you think about doing, what, what is it you think about? Well, first off is my mind is in a space that is very confident and I basically feel confident, my mind feels confident, my mental position is confident because of one reason. I do my goddamn homework. I do all the things that I need to do to feel confident mentally when I'm executing my lifts. For that matter, when I'm executing anything. So think of, <clears throat> think of your training. Think of lifting that heavy weight as taking the exam taking the test, you walk into that classroom to take the test and you kick ass and you're confident because you did your homework. You put in the time. You did the things that you needed to do to own the information. So when you walk in that classroom, you're not worried about can you do it. You're worried about how fucking much ass are you going to kick. Now, let's flip it around. Some people don't do their homework. You know, they're just hoping to walk in there and somehow hit a home run without really putting in the work, without preparing. They're walking in there fucking scared to death. Excuse my language. <laughs> the bottom line is this. <clears throat> if you want to be successful physically, mentally, the whole deal, you've got to put in the work ahead of time. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is my mental position on lifting something heavy, on doing anything that's challenging, my mental position has already been built into a very confident space before I get to that moment in time because I know that I've done the things that I need to do to be successful. And that's it's, if you think about this, of course, we're talking, the question was about lifting heavy weights, but this applies to damn near everything that we do. I mean... It applies to training, it applies to nutrition, it applies to relationships, it applies to work. You can't just expect that you're gonna sit on your ass and not do the things that you need to do to be successful and then be confident. It doesn't work that way. So <clears throat> what I would recommend doing is, you know, creating a plan for yourself. The, the plan, meaning make sure that you have your rest. Make sure that you have your meal plan in place. Make sure you're executing your meals. Make sure you're doing the things that you need to do to feel confident going in to that moment, that heavy lift. Whatever it is that you're doing, this question is about heavy lift. Okay, now when you get there, you've got the confidence. You've done the work to actually take that, that extra step to get extra focused it comes from the fact that you can see, you can feel the fact that you're gonna get a, a goddamn A, or maybe an A plus, meaning maybe a new PR. You can feel in your bones, you can feel it when you grab the bar that you're gonna be successful. And that mental position, that mental confidence is absolutely unstoppable. Confidence is that thing that allows you to get where you want to go. It's that thing that allows you to look at a hurdle and say, I'm going to bust your ass. Look at an obstacle and say, uh-uh, not going to stop me. So, again, <clears throat> I really think of these things from the roots. You know, it's real easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, I think about kicking someone's ass or I think about, you know, someone I don't like. There's a lot of times people try to harness negative energy, you know, and if that gets you fired up, great, but it's going to do a lot more if you do that on top of what we're discussing, which is doing all of your homework, doing all of the things you need to do ahead of time so that you can be confident. It's, it's one of these things that if, if the simplest way to think about it is this, we've all been to school, we've all had a situation where we were prepared for a test or an exam and it felt good walking in that classroom. Yes, you're, are you a little rattled? Are you a little scared? Of course, you want to succeed. 
But you don't walk in there thinking, oh my God, I'm fucked. You, you walk in there believing you're going to do well. Are you nervous because you want to do well? Fuck yes. Excuse my language. But when you go in there and you haven't done your homework, <clears throat> you haven't put in the time, you're, you're mentally not strong. You're mentally not confident. And lacking mental confidence in any position where you have to perform, I can't think of something worse. Because if you're mentally strong and you're mentally prepared, the odds are your body's going to pull through. The body, for most people, is capable of so much more. It's the mind that gets in the way. Now, obviously, when you get deeper into understanding how to harness your mental powers, all that changes. You know, like for me, Christ, I can take and I, I'm so mentally focused and strong. I could literally squat myself to a detached quadricep no questions asked um there's you know it took me a long time to, um, to get to that point where i was so mentally strong that i could actually i had to start to worry about being too mentally strong for what i could handle physically but you know that's a long journey to get there not a lot of people do get there so for most people it's the brain it's the mind that's in the way of the body not the other way around you know, when you get really, really up to speed with this mental confidence and you can push yourself, and um, then it flips around. Then it becomes more of, you know, the, the body can't handle what the mind can put it through. <clears throat> so it's, it's here again, I'm trying to get you guys to understand you got to think about the roots of these problems. The roots of the problems are everything. You can't just attack the flower and expect that you're gonna get some sort of a profound response. You've gotta look at the changing things from the from the, the inside out. You gotta rewire you know, the project. You've gotta reprogram your mind into a different perspective. You know, the fitness industry in general is a billion dollar industry, and all they wanna do is sell you shit to help you basically overcome whatever obstacles are hurled in front of you, but the problem is, it doesn't really teach you to deal with this. It te just teaches you to buy their shit. And unfortunately, their shit will work enough that you'll keep buying it. Now, if you adapt to what I'm talking about, that stuff's like giving the goddamn whale a Tic Tac. It doesn't even register because um, what I'm speaking of, changing the roots, changing the wiring, changing the programming is so much more advanced, so much more profound you know, when, <clears throat> when you get to high level, like high level people that are really freaking good at what they do, they don't use a lot of the products like pre-workouts and things like that. This whole pre-workout thing is really designed for people that, you know, don't really know what they're fucking doing. So they got to use these band-aids to fix these problems. When in actuality, I'm trying to get you to understand that we don't want to use band-aids. You know, we want to fix the problem from the inside out so we don't have all these issues on the surface to deal with. We rewire the thing, we reprogram everything. Then all of what's going on in the outside is what you want. And you're not having to use all this bullshit to try to get things pointed in the direction you want. You're not spending all your goddamn money on these goddamn products that ultimately become a crutch as well. Pre-workouts are the same thing. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, the pre-workout is great for motivation. It's great for my mental edge. Well, what that's doing, that's just taxing the shit out of your adrenal system. And again, that'll turn into a crutch really fast. Next thing you know, you're taking double dose of this shit. And even a double dose doesn't get you up anymore because you've basically taken, you've taken your adrenal system that's supposed to operate on its own. And you think of it like a cow. You've milked that adrenal gland dry. There's no more, you know, there's no more of that. You know, that thing that gets you all hyped up when you really want to go. I call it the button. Push that button, boom, there you are. Well, <laughs> you milk that adrenal system too much. Hit that button, nobody's there. Nothing's happening. That's because, again, you just like, like over milking a cow these products pre-workouts are over stimulating your adrenal system and then it crashes and it takes sometimes months to recover. So anyway, guys, there's three questions 
that uh, we covered today. And I know these answers are very different than what you're probably expecting, but this is what you guys need to hear. You know, I'm here to, to give you the truth. I'm not here to sell you a product. I'm here to, to basically bring you information. And information is power. And power gets you where you want to go. Signing off, everyone.